Some time ago, we took a look at some basic image editing tips using a program called GIMP. Today, we're going to be taking a close look at selections, one of these staples of image editing, and we're going to learn how to harness its full power in GIMP. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So here's what we're going to do today to learn more about this tool. First, we're going to take a look at several different ways on how we can actually create selections. Then we'll learn about how we can actually refine our selection, you know, tweak it up to suit our liking. And then finally, I'll show you some context in which you can actually use this effect. So yeah, without any further ado, let us jump right into part one. In GIMP, there are actually seven different tools you can use to generate selections. The first two are of course extremely simple, and that would be the rectangular selection tool as well as the elliptical selection tool. And they of course simply create a selection in the shape you've chosen. Alternatively, you can also use the lasso tool to actually select an area you want. This of course gives you more freedom because you can draw a shape you like, no matter how complex it is. On top of that, there are also two other tools you can use to make selections that you don't have a lot of control over. The first being the magic wand tool, which will allow you to select a region of the same color. You can also use the select by color tool, which behaves very similarly to the magic wand tool, except the difference between these two is that select by color tool will only look at color. So it will select areas of similar color throughout the same image. The magic wand tool does not do that. It basically goes as far as it can go. The moment it finds an obstruction, you know, something of a significantly different color, then it will not actually go beyond that boundary. So yeah, each has its own use. And later on, we'll talk about how we can sort of refine our selection using these tools. Finally, there are two other tools that try to be smart. I honestly don't use them very often because their smartness kind of falls short. These are the scissors tool as well as the select foreground tool. They actually perform some kind of analysis on the image to try and infer what it is exactly you are selecting. And using that information, it will help you try and generate a better selection with less effort on your part. Like I said, from personal experience, it is not a very accurate tool. I prefer to actually, you know, control my selections myself. So I barely use these two tools. And that is why we won't actually be talking about them in this episode. So now that we are more or less acquainted with all the tools we can use to generate selections, let's take a closer look at how we can use them to get the perfect selection. For the rectangular and elliptical selection tools, you'll want to look towards their configuration boxes because those can actually help you do a lot of things. For example, you can enter an actual number as to the width or the height of your selection. You can also lock it to a particular aspect ratio. You can lock it to a particular width or height. So yeah, if you ever need to enforce any of these things, you know where to look. For the magic wand and select by color tools, one of the cool things you can do is to change the detection threshold. This allows you to select more or less colors. You can change this effect by holding down your left mouse button while making the selection and moving the cursor up or down. Alternatively, if you prefer to dial in a more precise number, you can also set the threshold in the configuration box for the respective selection tool. As you can see, with different thresholds, we can control how far reaching the selection goes. For the lasso tool, basically you will draw your selection by clicking and creating an outline for the area you want to select. Every time you click, you actually create a control point that you can go back and shift. At the same time, if you feel you've made a mistake and you don't want the last control point you've added, pressing backspace on your keyboard deletes that last control point. So yeah, like I said, you can make mistakes, you can go back and tweak them. As long as you haven't committed it to an actual selection, you'll be fine. Actually, in fact, even if you already have, there are things you can do to make it better. GIMP actually provides several ways for you to combine and basically allow multiple selections to interact with each other. 
and the tools can be seen here when you have an appropriate selection tool selected. The default mode that is selected is replace, and what that means is if you have an existing selection and you make a new one, the old one is thrown away and the new one is in effect. But that is not the only behavior. If you use add, what you're doing is you are allowing both selections to take effect. If you use subtract, you can actually cut out the new selection area from the area of the old selection. And of course, if you use intersect, then you're trying to get the intersection between the two. So yeah, even if you make a mistake with the lasso tool, what you can do is you can simply add a new selection to it and you know just sort of finish up with the contour. When you're done with that, they'll actually merge together perfectly. When you get more used to using GIMP and you want to do things faster, you can actually use several keyboard shortcuts to help you with that. When you use Shift, what you're doing is you're selecting Add. When you press Control, that means Subtract. And when you press both Shift and Control, you mean Intersect. There are actually more things you can do to manipulate your selection by going to the Selection menu in the menu bar. Growing and shrinking, of course, does what it says on the tin. It makes the selection you already have either larger or smaller. Invert, of course, just selects what was deselected previously and deselects what was selected previously. So yeah, it is an inversion of the selection. Border is also pretty straightforward. It just creates a border using your current selection. And finally, feather. Now, this one is extremely interesting and extremely powerful. Basically, what it does is it smooths out the edge of your selection. So you can see several examples on screen. When I actually fill up a selection without feathering, you can see a clear edge. But when I do actually add feathering to the selection, you can see that the color actually fades out of the edges of the selection. This effect applies to anything you do with this particular selection. That is, if you want to do things like change up the brightness, that would happen as well. And that is why feathering is so powerful to sort of hide the seams in your more drastic edits. Of course, feathering is also available when you're making your selection. Many of the tools we've looked at actually have built-in feathering when you actually use the tool. So yeah, it is sort of a trade-off between when you want to use it. You can of course switch off feathering when you are using the tool, only after you've constructed your entire selection do you feather it as one, or you can actually feather it as you go along. But both works. In fact, I've never seen an issue doing things one way and not the other. So yeah, if you ever have any issues, of course, you are free to try the other method, but I don't think it makes a difference. So yeah, anyway, now that we know how to make a selection, let us, of course, learn how to use it properly. Of course, the simplest thing to do would be to make a selection and then copy and paste that area into a different image. Depending on what you're trying to do, feathering might actually come very much in handy in one such situation. Another one of my favorite applications of selections is to actually equalize the brightness in an image. For example, this image has some bright and some dark areas, and it's not easy to use the levels tool to equalize everything. So I create a selection over the darker regions, I feather it up significantly, and then I change the color. So yeah, these are just some ways you can use selections in GIMP. In particular, when used alongside feathering, you can actually get away with doing a lot of crazy changes to an image because it is not clearly visible. That's all there is for this episode. I hope you've learned something today. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on photography and image editing subjects. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.